What is up guys, Avengers Infinity War finally drops this week. I was very lucky enough to get to see this film early, so now what I decided to do is, hey, this is Avengers week, we're gonna be bringing a lot of MCU content, and the first thing leading up into this week is something that Sean Chandler did over on his channel that I've actually wanted to do on my channel, I know a bunch of other YouTubers are doing, and that is, I'm gonna be ranking 21 worst to best MCU villains. I know a lot of these villains haven't been particularly the best, but I see some good and bad in a lot of these villains, get what I'm saying there curious to hear about this so I'm gonna be posting all the character list down below so I want to hear where your guys list is so make sure to comment down below and tell me what your guys list is but without further ado let's get straight into this at my number 21 Number 21 the villain who I'm going to be calling is Malekith can I say anything else about Malekith? I think I should just skip this one. He's just very bland. I like the actor who portrays him, but really the script didn't give him anything to do, and he's just very unmemorable. He's boring, to say the least. On the tw number 20 is going to be the Sovereign from Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. These are cool creatures, and I like their designs, and I like the way that they would fight, and especially how it's like kind of like a video game simulator. My one issue with the Sovereign overall, though, is I felt like they were really just shooing in to really introduce Adam Warlock at the end, and that's that's one thing that didn't rub me right. I, I felt like the Sovereign could have been used in a better manner. At number 19 is going to be the Chitari. The number 19, I think they have a cool design. I just don't think there's anything really special to the Chitari, except their cool design. They don't really have like that main leader that sticks out to them. Coming at number 18 is going to be Whiplash, played by Mickey Rourke. Now, let me tell you, I actually love Whiplash's design. I love how Mickey Rourke portrays the character. I think he portrayed him very well, except with the stupid parrot. But besides that, Whiplash is a pretty cool villain. The way he moves his whips and the way he just fights in general is a very unique manner. I really do enjoy Whiplash. I just, again, it's a script issue where they focus more on the hero than the villain itself. Coming at number 17 is Iron Man 3's villain, Killian. Eh, I was really into the Mandarin. I, I don't hate the twist, but really Killian as this villain, I, I thought his powers were cool and the look of him was cool. I, I, I like Guy Pierce itself. I think Guy Pierce did a very good job portraying Killian. Again, it's a script issue where they focus more on the hero than the villain. They didn't build up Killian. You built up the Mandarin and gave me Trevor. I mean, at number 16 is going to be Ronan the Accuser. I actually really enjoy Ronan the Accuser. Lee Pace does a very good job as Ronan. Again, he just doesn't have a lot of character development behind him to understand why he's doing this. He's just a bad guy. But he does lose in a dance-off, and pretty much that's the way he loses. <laughs> I like Ronan the Accuser. I think he's pretty menacing. He does his job right, and really, there's just nothing special to him. That's how I always think of him. At number 15 is going to be Abomination. He's way higher up than this list is, even though he didn't really get a lot of character development and really anything else in the MCU. Abomination just has one of the baddest ass fights in the MCU. That Hulk scene versus Abomination is one of the best scenes still in the MCU. The way they're fighting, the way they're fight punching each other is just, it's gruesome, it's gritty, and I like when films do that. I mean, at number 14 is going to be Yellow Jacket. Yeah, Yellow Jacket is a really good antagonist to Ant-Man himself. You get some background history to why he's doing this, you get some background history to who he is, but overall, I just like the design of Yellow Jacket. I like when he's fighting Ant-Man, it just adds a lot of depth and personality to the characters. And just overall, it, he's a very good villain for the Ant-Man universe. I, I, I think he's very underrated, in fact. I think a lot of people gave Yellow Jacket crap, but I actually think the actor portrayed him, Corey Stoles, is a really good actor, and portrayed him to a great manner. And I just, I think he makes Ant-Man what it is. You know, Ant-Man is one of those films that's a smaller MCU film, and I think Yellow Jacket adds to that in the fight scenes, in the performance, and just the way he's levitated to himself and coming at number 13 is going to be Cassilius. i think that's how you say it uh he's from dr strange and i overall played by mads mickelson matt mickelson does a good job as Cassilius. i will say i wish they would have used him a bit more i think he could have had a little bit more character development if you would have given him a bit more time but the way he looks the glitter like the his eyes are like great and then you add in dormammu is within him and dormammu is one of the coolest villains in the in the marvel comics i wish they would have done him a little bit better besides this giant face i do think the fight scene with him and dr strange is great because it's it's different we haven't seen an ending like that to a fight scene but Cassilius is just He's he's another great antagonist back and forth to Doctor Strange, another magician, and I just like the feel and look of him. And number 12 is going to be Hela. This actually would have been way lower on my list if I did not just rewatch Thor Ragnarok. She still is low on my list just for a fact of she's played by Kate Blanchett. If she was not played by Kate Blanchett, I honestly think she would have ended up being another Malekith because Kate Blanchett always elevates a role to another level. I just... Hell is okay. She just she doesn't do much. She sits in a throne room, and then when they finally come to fight, that's when she starts kicking a ton of ass. And that's where it just I, I wish she would have had more to do. I think that's my one complaint I always have while watching Thor Ragnarok is Hella is there, but it's like 
she's not. She doesn't get enough screen time. You understand what she's doing, but it's really just uh, exposition heavy. But she did take Thor's eye out, which is pretty cool. Coming at number 11 is going to be Ultron, portrayed by James Spader. Now, I actually really enjoy Ultron. My one big issue with him is he, I think he cracks a little bit too many jokes and isn't as menacing as the trailers made him out to be. I expected this one to be dark and gritty and to give us some dirt. And Ultron wasn't that. He was joking at times, but I still enjoyed Ultron. I think James Spader's menacing voice, he was the best voice you could get to play Ultron. And Ultron overall, it has, he has good action sequences. You understand his reasoning and the way he's created all adds into that. I mean, at number 10 is going to be Red Skull. I've always really liked Red Skull. I've always wanted him to show back up into the Avengers films. I've really always needed him to be. And I always think that he's really just normal. I, I like the Red Skullness of him. I love Hugo Weaving's portrayal of him. And again, it's just one of those characters that I think they killed him off way too early. And I wish they would have just shown him. At number 9, I actually really like this villain and that is portrayed by jeff bridges obadiah stone or other known as the iron monger i just think he was a great antagonist to tony stark especially coming into the first iron man film you get jeff bridges who jeff bridges is one of the best actors working of all time and just the way he portrays iron monger you get it he kind of seems like lucifer the devil and i thought there was some great symbolism there with how he's trying to tempt tony but also not you know he just has those vibes to him and i think jeff bridges just portrayed the iron monger great some great action sequences towards the end with iron monger Longer, and I, I really just like the portrayal in here. Coming in at number eight is going to be Alexander Pierce. Yes, Robert Redford's character from Captain America, the Winter Soldier. He was a Hydra agent this whole time. And you know, Alexander Pierce just brings to one of those great twists that you had in one of those old spy films. He's great. Robert Redford portrays him great. There's really no cons to Robert Redford's character in here. I think he's just overall a really menacing and good villain and good portrayal into such a great twist in here. Number seven comes out to be Ego, the Living Planet. Played by Kurt Russell himself, Star-Lord's daddy. I really like Ego. I really understood his meaning. I understand his thoughts. You know, you actually get to care about Ego. Most of him really being a villain at the end wasn't the best, but Ego was just a really cool villain. I thought Phase 3 has pretty much had a lot of good villains so far, and Ego really was one of the ones that started to offer me. I think Ego is just, the way he looks, the feel and look of him is great. A lot of that goes to the CGI artist and James Gunn, but the way Kurt Russell portrays him is great. I mean, when that last fight scene between Ego and and Star-Lord is great, but you also understand that Ego is trying to be this father to Star-Lord, you know, the when they're playing catch is great, there's just a lot of good moments with Ego that really are memorable to me. Coming at number six is going to be Baron Zemo. Baron Zemo, the first time I saw Civil War, I did not like. I thought he was one of the worst villains in Civil War. I was like, you could totally get rid of him, and none of this, you know, this would have came up anyways. But in a sense... Zemo is actually very much more smart than I think a lot of people give him and I, I do recommend that the next time you watch Civil War if you do disagree with me check him out and watch him a little bit more. Hey, Daniel Brule portrays Baron Zemo is so unique. He's a different type of villain for the MCU. He has his reasons for what he's doing and it's just different. I, I don't know why. I can't put it on the tip of my tongue. It's on the tip of my tongue of why I enjoy Zemo so much, but I do think Zemo is one of the most underrated villains in the MCU. And number five is going to be Loki. Yeah, I said it. Loki's pretty low on the list. I get it. He's a great villain, but he's also kind of an anti-hero at times too, especially after Thor Ragnarok. I love Tom Hiddleston's performance as Loki. That's, that's the reason we watch, you know, him. He betrayed himself. He came above and pretty much outshined everyone in all the other Thor films. And Tom Hiddleston just has great charisma and charm that makes you really enjoy Loki's performance. And it's Loki. What else can I say about it? And number four is going to be the Winter Soldier. Now, Bucky Barnes himself, he comes back. And I'll, the Winter Soldier is super high on this list just because of those action sequences from Captain America, the Winter Soldier. I've always said that's probably the film with the best action in it. And the Winter Soldier is a lot to be a part of that. He is menacing. He is crazy. And he is scary as fuck. I love the Winter Soldier's portrayal. I love how he looks. I, I just, the way the portrayal, the way that you get the reveals and twists with Captain America, it just adds so much depth to the relationship. And Winter Soldier is seriously one of the best characters in the MCU. Coming in at number three is going to be Vulture from Spider-Man Homecoming. And this, if you guys didn't see my Spider-Man Homecoming review, I am not the biggest fan of the Vulture in the comics. I think the Vulture is probably one of the poorly, most poor comic book villains in Spider-Man lore. I, I just don't know why. I just never liked Vulture, but... The way Michael Keaton portrays Vulture. Again, this is another actor overcoming a lot of steps. Even though Vulture was pretty much written very well, 
Michael Keane elevated that dialogue to even be more than that. The twist that he is Liz's dad was a huge shocker. And every time I see it, every time I show someone Spider-Man, they always have their jaw drop. And again, Michael Keaton really elevates Vulture. You understand why he's doing this. You understand all these elements to it. And Vulture is just a menacing. He has some good moves. He has some good kick-ass things to him. And I just, I really like Vulture. And number two is going to be Killmonger. Eric Killmonger from Black Panther. When Black Panther came out this year, Killmonger sh sh shined. And it wasn't just because Michael B. Jordan brought a lot of elements and a lot of charisma to him and a lot of swagger. No, it was mostly because of the way that Ryan Coogler attacked Killmonger. And I think he even would have been a better villain if he was in it for maybe 10 more minutes. I think there's a part of the film where he's really much missing. I think there's that part that I would have wanted more of him. Killmonger is a very unique villain, to say the least. He's very powerful, and he's very menacing, in fact. We see that when, Black when he pretty much throws Black Panther over the waterfall. Spoilers, if he one of the one... 0.1% people that didn't see Black Panther. Eric Killmonger, I just like the look of him. He kind of looks like Vegeta in a sense, and that's pretty cool because Michael B. Jordan like also likes Dragon Ball Z, so that's even better. I love the Golden Jaguar costume, and just the even though the fight scenes weren't the best in Black Panther, when they were with it going, I think it, a lot of it added to Eric Killmonger and the way he was fighting, the different styles that he would use, and just you saw that this guy is a bloodthirsty killer. He also has his reasons for being like that, and that, that was one of the biggest things about Killmonger is that in a sense, not just because Michael B. Jordan, he's bringing a bunch of swagger and he's cool. You kind of understand that, like, why people would side with him. But coming in number one for the best villain in the MCU, it's Thanos. And I really didn't think he was going to be able to beat Killmonger. But after seeing Avengers Infinity War, the amount of depth, the, the fact that he's pretty much the main character in Avengers Infinity War, which is a risk for a studio and directors and writers to really take on and tackle because he's a giant CGI purple alien. But in a sense, it's... He, you can't even tell it's CGI. He looks great. He has some great minions with the Black Order, which I, I would have put him on this list, but I think there were more honorable mentions. But Thanos himself is the power driven mad titan that we always hear about. He is powerful. He shows his strength. And again, this is you see his perspective. That's something that the directors and writers did very well. You see why he's doing what he's doing. You understand why he's doing. Maybe you don't agree with him. But you definitely see why he's doing it. And I think even the Avengers, in a sense, do see this as well in Avengers Infinity War. Again, Thanos, he's mad. But he has his reasons for being like that. And I think that's just great to see what Thanos brought to the screen. I was so happy to see that. He seriously is the best villain in the MCU. Given there's not a, a bunch of great ones, but the fact that he beat out Killmonger for me was a big step up for the MCU. And I... Like I said, after Black Panther, it's gonna the MCU. Every villain from now on has to be at least decent or good, not bad. So I'm hoping Ant Man and Wasp has a good villain. Yeah, guys, that's my ranking of all the MCU villains. Make sure to comment down below and tell me your guys' ranking from all the characters I picked out. If I missed any that you think I should have added in, please comment down below. Maybe some of you guys will bring up Trevor from Iron Man Three. Okay, I'm done with the jokes about the twist. Guys, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button so you guys don't miss any of my other Marvel videos this week. Still doing a, t a ton of them leading up for Avengers: Infinity War this week. And if you guys didn't check out my review for that, go check it out over on my channel as well. I really enjoyed the film, if you can't tell from this video. So if you guys want to talk more geeky stuff, go hit up all my social media links. And of course, go hit up Sandwich on Films as well. If you guys want to check out more movie news, movie reviews, and maybe go get a chance to go see some advanced movie screens in a town near you. So of course, until next time, stay classy.